Oh, and that's us on. How you doing, everyone? Welcome back to Broadcast here for the second time this week. But we have got an absolute cracker. I'm Billy Kirkwood. And of course, I'm joined by my special guest this week. You'll all know his face. You'll all know him from the community. And well, I say you know you know his face. He's one of the most recognizable faces for the, the, the Brotherhood, the Brobeard brand. I'm here with Davey Wallace. Davey, how are you, mate? I'm not bad, thanks. I just trying to deal with this kind of shitstorm that's happening in the now. So just Getting it is, my days in. It's weird times, isn't it? That's it. It's all about getting the days. What are you doing to fill the days, mate? Uh, just been tidying up out in the garden. Can I got my workshop all sorted out? So I was actually home to to broadcast from my workshop the night, but the Wi Fi right. was a bit kind of shit out there. So wasn't it? I'm saying the workshop. That's the the, the rave cave that, that the Jimmy rave. was telling you about. So. Well, I've I've got I've got I've got to come back all about the rave cave uh, a little later on because. Well, that seemed to be a lot of people. It was quite funny when Jimmy mentioned it on the, uh, it would have been episode one of this series, right? When he mentioned it, the number of people in the comments that went nuts going, I can't believe he's mentioning the rave cave. <laughs> this is like, I, this is like our big secret. I know, that kind of dates back to maybe three, four years ago. And I used to kind of, used to go live out in the rave cave and just kind of dance about and just, yeah, but a kind of village idiot kind of thing, you know. But I, <laughs> I tried the day, as I say, but the, the internet was, was kind of pretty shit out there. So then I take the gamble and go out there, and it was just sitting, freezing up. So and well, in the boring old house. Where are you today? Are you just in the living room for us? Ah, uh, in the boring, shitty living room. Yeah, and so none about that, mate. It's where we do. It's where we do our business in the living room. Where we do our <laughs> business. Now this is this is great for me because like almost twice within a week I've got to talk to two Ayrshireonians, which I'm very excited about. Um, nah. You are because I'm in Crooked Home right now, which I'm to I believe is still in Kamarok, but apparently it's not. Um, as people are quick to tell me, and you're just over in Cross House, is that right? Yeah, I'm Chris House. Yep. Right, so uh, it's lots. Of, it's weird times, mate. Uh, everything's sort of going on. So thanks very much for taking the time to to talk to us hey, tonight. Um, we'll sort of start at the beginning. Uh, are you are you a born and raised Ayrshire Onion? Ah, uh, yeah, I'm. Yeah, I, I moved to Christmas maybe about nine years ago. So I did. I, I grew up in Kelly and uh, the area of Bonnet, and so I did. Right. Okay. So there was. I'm trying to think. There was me, and my wife, and four kids in a two bedroom flat. So. Right, it's a bit kind of a bit crazy, you know. So, so end up we got a house. Out. Sorry, on you go. How many kids did you say that was? Well, I've got five kids, but at the time um, my oldest daughter had moved out, she's thirty. So, so I've got four boys in the house with me now. So it's kind of so it's <laughs> right, right. <laughs> bloody hell, mate! I've just had. Well, I've got a, I've got a three month old, but I've got three boys. My man, you're a Jedi of being a dad. <laughs> I, know. I, I was not ready for that. So what's the, what's the ages of the kids? Well, as I say, Kayleigh, my daughter, she's 30, so she stays in Chris' house as well. Right. Um, David, Mould, David Mould's son, he's 20. Jamie's 16. Ben's 14. And Josh is 10 tomorrow. Holy crap. 10 tomorrow. Well, happy birthday, yeah. Joe. You, uh, you've, yeah. you've, sp you've spread that out quite a bit, mate, if you don't mind me saying. I know. <laughs> I've no regrets. The rough man, so I'm quite happy with, with what I've got. So, well, I'm sure. I'm sure they. I'm sure they, uh, the wife will be uh, happy to hear there's uh, there's no regrets. Certainly. Um, nice. all, all right. Well, we've got to start. It's uh, a story. I know you've got loads of sort of outside interests and what have you. But you grew up in Ayrshire. Um, are you a lonely child? Is there other members of the family? Is there brothers and sisters? Um, I've got. Uh, a younger brother and an older sister, so I have so right. So, how are they in comparison to uh, to you? What is it? Uh, what was it like growing up uh, as part of a family? Were you three very similar kids, or were you three very different sort of interests? So my mm -hmm. my younger brother, he kind of he didn't grow up with me, kind of thing. You know, he's he's like my step brother, so he is. So I really just grew up, I just really grew up with my sister, kind of thing. So aye, uh, he's. She's probably, I was going to say someone. Nah, she's probably different to me, actually. I go into the rave cave and kind of listen to all my tunes and she sits and crochets at home, so I have two different people. <laughs> so, I can't uh, been, been out in the rave cave crocheting, so it's not going to happen. Who knows? We'll do anything to fill our days just now, I guess. So, uh, I 
what what were you like as a kid then? Was it like did you inspire to just was what was your plan? What was it you wanted to be? So when you were growing up, what was the journey you wanted to go on? Uh, initially, probably at school, I probably wanted to be a cop. My dad, right. my dad's a policeman, so he has so. Oh, no. And then I found I found out I was colourblind, so so that kind of hit that in the head, you know, because. I don't know why I'd be chasing the guy in the green car and I'm away fucking the other direction chasing the blue car off on the road. There's this fucking idea I waited, you know. But so um and after that I don't know. I, I love driving and a lot of my family's all kind of long distance lorry drivers and I always kinda of fancy being a kind of a trucker as well. I remember talking to my careers officer and said that I wanted to be a truck driver. Right. And they kind of looked at me, they, they probably thought I was a bit seven year old instead of like fifteen or something at the time, you know, like, what to drive lorries kind of thing. But um but that that, that none, none happened on that kind of that side of things. So when I was at the school I, I was just gonna say I was obviously into woodwork. I enjoyed kinda of like craft and design and tech at school. Right. So my my tech teacher he pulled me aside one day at the end of class um and he just said to me if I was interested in a job there was a job going locally, he's parlo in the firm. Um, so he sent me along, and it was working in a cabinet shop making furniture. So it was. So okay, I went along. I went along to the place, fifteen year old, and went and seen the folk, and then left the school at fifteen and started. Well, I'm saying it was an apprenticeship. It wasn't. A, I didn't leave to go to college or anything. So it was just like an in house training. So Aye. I spent four or five years in a cabinet shop doing furniture restoration and and making new furniture. So I did. So so, so that's you, what happened. You, you didn't school. You didn't see that happening, but did that become a passion of yours? Oh, definitely. I, I, I just love working with wood, anything to do with wood, you know. Mm. I like doing kind of things. Just, um, I've always said if I, if I ever made it, made it big with money kind of thing, I'd have just a massive, I don't mean a hanger, but it's a big massive workshop We all fully stocked up with wood. See, I hate, I'm not one of these kind of guys, I, I don't enjoy being, you want to make some, but then you've got to go to the stuff and buy, oh, I need to buy five lengths of this and two sheets of that. Right. I would just fucking love a big place where it's all just stocked up and you get, you get up in the morning and you just go out there and have a wee look around about and say, ah, oh, fuck it, I'm just going to make that, such and such a day, you know, without having to, Aye. you know, you can just pull in and off the shelf and just, just go with the flow kind of thing, you know. Yeah. So I, I, I do enjoy working with wood kind of thing. I, I was going to say maybe when I was at, I think maybe when I was at school, I probably did think about kind of joining of that, but I was going to say I was a daft teenager, but I wasn't. I just, I probably, a career probably didn't, I maybe didn't think about it too much kind of thing until until the teacher put that opportunity on the table for me kind of thing, which I was pleased that he kind of singled me out in the class, you know, to, to go, you know, and work for his pal's company kind of thing. So it's yeah. kind of pretty honoured, you know, that somebody kind of singled me out, you know, like, I was going to say, obviously, he's seen something in me, I don't know, but. Maybe it was a, the best of a bad bunch, I don't know, but just ah, so so it all kind of kicked off with there. No, he's, he's clearly saw your passion at that time because I can hear it in your voice even now that it's clearly something that you're still very, yeah. very passionate about now. Is it something that you, um, so what, what is it? Is it really what drives you just creating stuff yourself or res, uh, restoring stuff, or is it a little bit? Oh, of... I've not really done, I was going to say I've not done furniture work for a few years now because I've done. I done fencing for a, for a lot of years. I remember you saying the other week there, but did your dad do fencing or something? Did you my say? dad, yeah, my dad was a fencer all around the uh, uh, all around sure. all around, like he would do do fences for like um oh he would do fences in like Orkney and all that. I'd be away for ages at a time. Yeah, so so after 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 working in the kind of furniture game, my uh, my father in law, he was um he he was a foreman at um, a, a local company, Howard and Lop, so. They were probably one of the biggest fencing contractors in Scotland at the time, maybe even the yeah. UK, in fact. So I went and worked with them, and I've done, done six weeks abroad working with them, doing a military fencing contract. So, okay. so that kind of that kind of gave me the, the kind of fencing bug. So I'm kind of I take a lot of pride in the fences. I do. I know a lot of people just say a fence. You know, there's a lot of shitty fences out there, but oh, kind of I treat a fence like kind of like a, like a work of art of that. A lot of folk maybe laugh at you kind of thing, you know, but I take a lot of pride in it, whether it's a bit of furniture or whether it's a fence kind of thing, you know, it's it's got to be right or, you know, it doesn't happen kind of thing, so. 
In short, in short, Davey, everything you've just said in the last two minutes basically makes you the son that my dad always wanted. In <laughs> 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 all fairness, I mean, he can even though he's in his eighties now, he can still swing a hammer and put a post in like nobody's business. Yeah. Uh, you never lose it. You never lose it. Right. But what we've got? To, well, I should say for the first time ever. Oh my God! Uh, so many people have been trying to get my attention. Uh, first of all, there is uh, Simon Nang Nangle. Simon, Nagel, oh, Simon, <laughs> Simon, he oh, has given he has given you absolute pelters here in oh, all fairness. He always, uh, he always does. But I'll, I'll see, get I'm, Simon his good. Simon taught me kind of pretty much everything I know in the fencing game. So, so I'll, I'll get Simon that kind of thing. Well, he says I pitched in his favourite trainers in Selkirk one ah. night. Uh, we, we, we worked away at uh, Selkirk, so we did for, right. we were down there for a good few weeks working, and um, the first night we were away, can I, you know, it's like when you're working away from home, then can I spend a bit of time in the pub? Aye. And I'm sure, I'm sure when we get back to our digs that night, I had some, like, was it, Simon may be correct in the comments, it was some like 43 missed calls from my wife, so it was, you know, because she obviously thought I was out in the lash that night, you know, but we're just, just having a few beers after work kind of thing, you know, but. Ah, uh, he's a good guy, Simon. So, uh, well, every everyone's actually asking me about this point. We'll go, we'll come on to like your your other interests and we'll have you in just a little bit. Um, but we've got to talk about the beard. First of all, I understand it's an anniversary for the beard. Happy fifth yeah. birthday! Uh, uh, cheers. Uh, I saw that on your social media the other day. Uh, that's incredible. Like, so first of all, we we always got to go through this in terms of uh, when did you become aware of you wanted a different look? Because I always find that um, there's always a point where you kind of become comfortable in your own skin, where you kind of start uh, thinking about how you want to look. When did you start thinking, you know, I'm going to go for some type of facial hair or I don't want to be Pringle shirt and, you know, jeans tucked in. I'm a little, I'm cut from a slightly different cloth here. When did that uh, all start started happening for you? Oh, uh, I had a goatee beard for years, so I did, but just really, really short. It's probably slightly longer than, than stubble kind of thing. Right. And then um, a local guy in the village had said to me, yeah, he, he's got a beard, so he has a name. Um, he said to me one day, he said, oh, he said, how do you not grow a beard? And it's just, you know, it sounds like a strange thing just to say to another guy kind of thing. So yeah, I thought, ah, stuff it, why you know? Kind of thing. I, don't, I hadn't really thought about growing, growing like a full beard before kind of thing. I was always quite happy with just a wee kind of a wee goatee. Aye, aye, and then so I, decided, so I decided I'd started kind of growing it kind of thing and never ever anticipated I'd get to, I mean, I think I'm sitting, I'm sitting about 19 inches now kind of thing. So I'm down, down under the table here some. So, no. um, so I so joined a few Facebook group, uh, groups and stuff like that. And so I remember I grew it probably for the first eight months without getting it trimmed kind of thing. And it was just a bit kind of, just a bit wild, you know, it was just, really kind of untidy looking yeah and then i remember uh i was kind of I was trying to i was trying to source like a decent barber because i didn't just want to go to any barber that's just going to hack right. shit out it well, kind of thing well, so not to, not to take anything away from the good barbers here in ayrshire but it's it's a bit of a different kettle of fish when you're looking after something like that and growing up in this neck of the woods i know for a fact that it's short back and sides clean shaven or a mustache you know i mean it's not really anything a bit more complicated so you're looking for a new barber where, where does that journey take you well i ended up there's a there's a, a wee village called Moors, kind of yep. close by so it was a place there, a vintage barber there's a guy mm -hmm. there kind of a guy mitch he's he's the kind of the beard master so he is so um so i think i sent him a message and it's, this sounds a bit kind of crazy right so i sent him a message and asked him if he kind of specialized in beards so he said he, he said he did kind of thing you know so I, I went and I seen him. So so I didn't. It's, as if I was kind of betting him to see if if this guy was kind of good enough to do my beard. If it a, <laughs> sounds fucking bonkers like that. So, um, oh, no. it's an inve so, it's an investment. You don't want to you don't want a cowboy looking after your beard. I guess. Aye, but but the guy Mitch is he's absolutely brilliant. So he is. Yeah. So we had like a, we had a right lengthy discussion about you know what I was about to do with my beard and, and what the kind of plans were for it. So aye, back then. I mean, that must have been like four years ago kind of thing. But back then, the plans weren't even to go as big as this kind of thing. I just wanted some kind of tidy in that. So so when I seen Mitch, you know, he kind of tidied, it shortened it. For the first couple of years, my beard was really kind of 
really tidy, tight into my face at the sides. And it was just kind of like shaped more kind of, I was going to say more into a kind of point. So right. it was no, no a definite point, but kind of like, like tapering in, kind of like closing in. Aye. And then I've always said in my beard journey kind of thing, and a lot of people when been asked like for kind of like for tips and advice kind of thing, I always try and set myself like a believable target. So not, some somebody growing a beard could say, right, oh, why I grow a 20 inch beard. Aye. You're gonna you're gonna wait a long a long time before you get any kind of any achievement back kind of thing. So I've always kind of done it where like set a couple inch target at a time kind of thing, you know. So I, I remember like back when I was like eight inches kind of thing, you know. I'm so sorry, I'll try and get to ten. Yeah. So then that maybe I don't know a good few months down the line, you hit to ten inch. So then I'd kind of look at my beard, kind of reassess where I wanted to go for there kind of thing. And same with my barber. We used to have like really lengthy discussions about what we we're going to do with my beard and how it would affect my beard, maybe a year, two year down the line, kind of thing, you know. So I don't mean, right? Don't mean he's kind of he's honed it into shape, but he kind of has, you know, like to do with, with ways that he cut it, maybe a year, two year ago, you know, has helped it develop the shape, you know, and yeah, so like getting getting your neckline trimmed, kind of thing, for the first, I don't know, maybe for for the first. Year or two year, I always used to get my kind of neckline trim kind of thing, and yeah. I regret that because that 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 gives you a lot of the depth in your beard and a lot of the thickness. So I maybe kind of regret trimming my neckline for for as long kind of thing because obviously now I'm saying about my beard would be thicker, but it's thick enough as it is now, you know. Yeah. So and same with my sides, like. If I didn't shave my, as I say, we never anticipated we get to this this length anyway, so. If I didn't shape my, I trim my sides and keep it tight into my face, back at the beginning, you know, like like when you look at Jimmy's beard, Jimmy's beard is like yeah. pretty much start to the end, like coming out wide kind of thing, where a lot of my volume starts kind of like lower down my jawline. So, so was it like so. early doors? Because it sounds like was it quite early doors then? So you've gone for you've had the goatee for years. So was it like early yeah. doors when this suggestion you'd grown a beard up? Was that when you went? You know, I would quite like to make this. Was, how do you approach that? What's your thoughts at that early point? Is it like, oh, it's just a hobby, it's just for me? Or even at that early point where you go in, you know, I'd like to get into this competitive world of sort of growing beards. Was that how you were thinking early doors, or was it just like, oh, it's just a hobby, it's just something for me? It's probably just a hobby, just a different look to start with Aye. kind of thing. And then as it started growing in, I, I kind of liked it then. I joined some groups and stuff on on social media, and then like, like the kind of community met met a lot of new pals through that. So I did. Yeah, it wasn't really until I, I, I probably didn't. I was going to say I probably didn't get hooked really serious until the first Broadbeard Moustache Championships, and I got um, I got second place in that. So I did, and then after that, I was like, holy shit! Then I, just when you see kind of like what's out there, kind of thing, the sense of achievement. I, like getting recognition, like for yeah, a lot of folk. It's a lot. Of, I, I know for a fact a lot of folk are like, look, it's just a fucking beard, but it's not. It's not a beard. They see the confidence it gives you as well. You know, like, I don't mean it's like going out with a mask on, but it, it, it does. It kind of it, it, it kind of breaks that barrier. So it does. You know, it, it's like it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's like a, a celebration. Or it's like it's a body positivity thing. Oh, you're definitely. Because you're going, I, I like what this is. Come at me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And it's, um, it's probably anybody in the comments will, will tell you I'm a, I'm a pure attention whore, Sam. So, you know, it's, it's, all about, it's all about the likes and stuff, you know? Like, do you well, know what I, and what did you think, though, when you first saw that world when, I mean, I know it's competitive, but it's also a very open community, a very welcoming community. And I'm not just saying the Brotherhood. I'm talking about, you know, other companies that are, you know, other organizations, other groups that are around. But what did you think when you saw that? It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go in for this. This is a laugh. This is something I'm passionate about. I would like to be a part of this. Was it was it a positive step for you or was it something you were quite nervous about in those early sort of early days? Are you talking about what after the first competition or no, even even going into that world because it's it's a world that I'm learning a lot about. It sounds sounds silly, but you see, like if 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 anyone's watching this and, and maybe you're just sort of coming up to speed, but these competitions are all around the world. Uh the, yeah. the Robbie Championships here in Scotland is a is a huge thing, but you've only really seen clips of them beforehand. 
before I really realised that there is a, a big, big scene here in the UK and there's a big, big scene, you know, and, and throughout Europe. You don't ever really seen clips of these yeah. beard and moustache championships and they'd always been treated a little bit like, oh, well, look the, at the this. Thing was, the thing is, with the, with the broad champs, that, that was like the, the, the kind of first beard and moustache championships that have been in Scotland. So, yeah. so it's kind of a bit, a bit of the unknowns. But probably, to be honest, with a, a group is all up there. We probably just thought it'd be more of a laugh, to be honest. You know, yeah. I've got on the stage and see, see how we do. Never ever expected to get anything. And then, as I say, when, when I got to second place that, that, that night, then it's absolutely blown away. Then it kind of made me hungry for, you know, for, I don't mean fame, but, but just to try and you get recognition for something that's just grown naturally yeah. on your face. It's not as if, it's not as if it's a talent. You you need to work hard to do. You're, you're yeah. genetically gifted, kind of with it. So I just thought, yeah. well, I know it's grown on my face anyway. So why why not? I don't mean capitalize on it, but, but use it to your advantage, kind of thing. No, you know, no, no. Com- completely. Well, well, that would takes us to the the sort of next step in your sort of career, if we like. Um, certainly in respect to the beard. So, you then become one of the faces, brand ambassadors of, of Robbie and Earth. How does that come about? Uh, well, I, I know Jimmy said to you the other week there that um, me and Jimmy, we, we were both ambassadors for a company based in America, so we were. So, we'll say no more about um, that. The, the, kind of, the, the problem with that was trying to... Trying to Trying to promote a, an American brand in the UK and get your pals to buy the stuff. It's just, it's not happening and kind of reliability issues and stuff. And it's just, I didn't really want like to be associated with, with something I wasn't 100% happy with, kind of thing. Yeah. You know, like I'm not going to, I'm not going to try and promote somebody's stuff if I don't, if I don't believe in, in the brand and in their morals and stuff as well. You know, it's, 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 it's not just all about getting free shit, as, as folks say, kind of thing. It's, it's more to it than that. So, um, so after I, I decided to, to part ways with that company, I mean, Brobeard wasn't even on my list. Because, the, the reason Brobeard was, was never on my list is because when I looked at the guys that they had representing them, so like professional people, like MMA guys, like motorcyclists and stuff, so I don't know what, and just a, a normal a normal boy for the council scheme, are they? And that, that's yeah. the way I genuinely thought of it. So... I kind of approached a couple of other companies and stuff, and then so ended up representing another another brand, and then um, and I, I received a message for John. It was just like um, he didn't realise that I was, you know, I was jumping ship, you know, changing companies kind of thing. Uh-huh. It just basically said, look, if if you're ever changing, if you ever decide to change again, he says, hit me up. He said we might be able to work together in the future. And I thought to myself, holy shit, fucking John Jackson just messaged me, you know, pretty much. No, no, saying there was a deal there, there and then, you know, like like to represent Rob, but just saying, look, if you ever decide in the future, you know, hit, hit me up, kind of thing. So yeah, I, I just I couldn't get it out of my head, kind of thing, you know. So a couple of months had passed, and then I decided I was just I was wanting to move on and, and kind of have a crack at it, kind of thing. So parted ways with, with the second brand I was with, and then I got got in touch with John, and we just got chatting, kind of thing, and then. I think it was a couple of weeks later of that where we were away doing a photo shoot and I'm like, holy shit, there's, there's a guy here with a camera <laughs> wanting to take pictures of me and my beard kind of thing. And, and Brobeard, you know yourself, they're absolute mega. So they are, you know, on the, on the beard yeah. scene, just the quality of their products and the, the whole brand, you know, like when you compare them against all the other brands, there's that many brands where it's just guys making stuff in their kitchen just trying to get by, you know, and yeah, John's made that. John's made that big commitment, you know, to make it, you know, his livelihood kind of thing, you know, and yeah. that, that says a lot. Of that. that was, was a, a mega jump for John to take as well, you know, like for, yeah. for jacking in a full time job, you know, to, to put everything into this. And a lot of that's, folks have got a lot of respect for John, you know, for doing that. And oh, and, that, and that that's the thing. He's looking for people that are as passionate about it as he is and I think it always yeah. and and everyone I meet again is it sounds like I'm, I'm I'm sucking up but everyone from the community is so invested in more and more people coming even at the even at the championships for example just to use it as because as, it's the big event in the calendar let's say 
you see people there from all walks of life. You see people oh, there, uh, and and everyone's made feel welcome. You see people there with not a hair on their face, but there they are wearing the clothes. Because what I find is so cool about it is it's a brand that's a cool brand. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. the, the the shirts, the hats, the, everything about it is is so welcoming, yeah. and it just builds that attention and builds that community. But I've got to ask you, right? So here you are. You're a boy for uh, you're a Kelly boy for Bonnet and Kraken Chippy. By the way, I've got to get that in there. Uh, no. <laughs> Butter and Chippy is one of the best. I like, best. I'm no stranger to the Chippy. <laughs> oh, man, the Butter and Chippy. If there's anybody, I've, I'm counting the days to he opens again. I'm gutted, <laughs> gutted, right? Um, it's amazing the list you've come up with of food you're going to eat as soon as this lockdown's finished. I swear to God. Um, but um, but here you are, you're away from there. And now you're away getting, you know, you're, um, I don't, I, did I use the phrase model? I'm never exactly sure what phrase to use. But here you are, you're modelling in these pictures, and if you've not had the opportunity to check, make sure to go and check out um, Davy's Instagram. I know that's where you put a lot of the the, uh, the photo shoots you do. Uh, I know you've yeah. got them on Facebook as well, but really, really, really right. go over and check the Instagram. Amazing stuff on there. How do you feel about that being from, well, here, I, I've made this shift, and now I'm actually having, I, I mean, I'm, I'm modelling. Uh, how, how does that feel for someone like yourself? No, it's, it's, it's absolutely amazing. It, it, it really is. Um, I, I think I think what I get for a lot as well is the amount of messages I get like for, for guys looking for advice on their beard and stuff as well. Yeah. I received a message today and it was a guy asking about products and stuff. Um, it's just to do with different scents and, you know, and, and just, just wanting advice and messaged the guy back for today Then the guy sent me a screenshot he'd put an order in today kind of thing, you know, so it's no... Brilliant. It's not a case of, oh, you're the answer, that's another sale. It's, it's giving somebody advice so, so they're buying something they want rather than just punting them anything. Do you know, it's no, yeah. it's not just a bit, you, you know, I, I don't mind. I've sometimes spent a couple of hours, you know, messaging guys back and forth, you know, just to just to try and find out exactly what it is they're looking for and to do with what length their beard is and, you know, do they need a comb, do they need a brush, you know, what's going to work best for them, you know. Aye. so. I, I get a great deal of pleasure out of just helping people in the community as well, you know, and, and the fact that, that people people ask you advice, you know, that, that means a lot to me as well, where, you know, that they obviously, they obviously think that you're knowledgeable enough that they, they can ask, you know, because they're using the products day in, day out, and, you know, you know how, how they act and, you know, what, what benefits they've got for you. So, do you, so that, you... I, I, I Sorry, get a great agree. No, so I, I, I'm saying I get a, a great, a great reward for you know for helping people out on that side of things. It's not just Aye. all about about the selling side, you know. It's helping as well, and I think a lot of people appreciate that as well. You know, that you take the time out rather than I don't mean ramming it down their throat, you know, because I do, I know I do promote broad beard, you know, like the health. So I do, you know, but it's because I do believe in the, in, in the product and the brand, you know, and that mega, mega passion about it. Like Lindsay will tell you the same, like. Me and Lindsay chat quite often, you know. We, we feel like pinching ourselves a lot of the time, you know. Just a, a lot of folk, a lot of folk don't get it, kind of thing, you know. But it's, it's, it's the way the way I look at it is, is if you're to, if, if you're a, a kind of a young football fan or some like, it's, it's like getting a job at, at Man U or some like, you know. It's like yeah, it's crazy, you know. It's it's, 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 it's unimaginable. You, you would never expect it, kind of thing, you know. And you know, Lindsay said to you the other night when he, he got asked to come along to the the photo shoot up at Triumph in Glasgow kind of thing, you know, like, what, what a laugh I had that day, you know, it's just, it's an absolute scream, you know, no, no one's ever taken too serious, you know, when, when you're out taking shoots and that, you know, but it's, it's good because I look at it as downtime as well, so uh, you're out working a lot, you know, kind of, as I say, like with four boys now, so, you know, it's it's good sometimes just to get a wee release kind of thing, you know, get, uh, it's, not, it's not even like a day with the boys, you know, drinking a lot, but it's just, it's just about downtime, you know, and get a laugh and stuff, you know. So it's it's good, it's good for the sanity as well. So definitely, it's it was the old saying: if you if you love your job, you've never worked, you'll never work a day in your life. Yeah, uh, exactly, you, know, that's it. Yeah, you, you go just have a it's a great time, and that's one of the things that uh, has blown me away. And I, I've certainly seen yourself and Lindsay talking about it about you know mental health awareness 
and uh, responsibility. I know you're a, a big advocate of that, Davey. Um, uh, do, you, do you find that something that is, is prevalent and needs dealt with in the community or, or really a message that just needs to get passed out there or is there still some is there still some barriers to get broken down, do you think? I think the mental health side, you know, it's, I don't mean it's, it's rife, you know, but it's, 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 it's extremely common now kind of thing, you know, so... Definitely. Sometimes you sometimes you see guys putting post something it's, it's like a cry for help kind of thing, and yeah. it's just it's reaching out to the people, and yeah, it's, it's a kind of whole macho side of things as well, you know, like like to kind of to man up and like, to go on social media and say, you know, you're you're in like in a, in a dark place, and what like enough, I've never been in that place yet, so well, I'm saying yeah, yeah, well, I've never been in that place, and hopefully I never ever will be, kind of thing, yeah. but. It's, but the community is, is a great place, you know, to, to get help, you know, and I, you, you guarantee if you were to put a post up, you know, that the feedback you would get for it would, would be immense kind of thing. It's not, it's not even attention seeking, it's just it's just getting that initial post out there, you know, just saying That's that it. you need the help kind of thing. And I've seen it many a time, but on 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 the other side, I've seen I've seen guys lose their life as well, you know, like take their own life. And it's, but, but it's uh, a lot, the, the, the one I'm talking about that, Nobody really kind of knew that guy was in such a dark place, kind of thing, and, of and it just totally, totally shook the, the, the whole community, kind of thing. You know, a lot of folk were, I don't mean angry at themselves, but just just angry that they, they couldn't do anything to help the guy because they, they probably they didn't know mm -hmm. the guy Darren Jones, you know, bearded trucker, mm -hmm. a, a great guy, so he was really, really popular in the community. So uh, that, that was a kind of hard one to take. You know, never ever met Darren in person, but fucking hell, God, just for a few days after, I was just. Yeah, I was just kind of wanting about in a, in, a, in, a, in a days, you know. And that's what I mean. That you don't. A lot of these guys you've never met, you never spoke to face to face, kind of thing, you know. But just mm -hmm. talking to them online, like it's a lot of these times you go to competitions, you meet folk who you've spoke to online for maybe the last couple of years. Yeah, you talk about you talk about as if you've known them like like childhood friends, kind of thing, you know. So, ah, uh, the mental health, but it's. But it's it's getting people and, talking and, and it's breaking down. Yeah, like you say, yeah, yeah. the ma the macho barriers. Because I mean, hell, I mean, you might not think it. Uh, like I mean, my long hair, my tattoos. People will get the impression of thinking one thing about someone because the the visual thing, you know, you never judge a by book by its cover, do you? And uh, one of the things I've learned about the community is there's loads and loads of things that uh, the community can do for each other, whether it is. Just people yeah. reaching out and going, can you give me some info on beards? Or even the community being really good at holding each other up. I, I think that's amazing. Talking about the community, though, loads of people are giving me questions and some stuff right. uh, for you, Davey. So uh, I'll get us one very quickly. A lot of people saying to get your bagpipes out. All right. Uh, I did them out actually last week, so I did. But I, I could do a wee bit more practice. I've not been <laughs> no real playing them for the last couple of years. But uh, I, used to, I used to go go and do live videos and play my pipes and stuff, you know, when I was out in the rave cave. And, Amazing. You know, I was also, when I was full of the beers kind of thing. So I, 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 I kept on thinking I was going to go back to it, and I did go back briefly last year, so I did. But I think when, well, you're, out, when you're out working a lot and stuff as well, and you don't have a, a lot of spare time, it's it's quite it's a hard all. thing to keep up kind of thing. I, it is, yeah. Because I see the I see the bagpipes on your arm there. Is that right? Is that the bagpipes on your arm? I, 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 yeah, I, I hate that tattoo. That's a that's a shit tattoo. That one. Do you know? I know a couple of tattooists. We'll get you sorted. We'll get it covered up. We'll right. get it covered up. We'll yeah, get I know. I need to cover that when you finally open again. Uh, well, I tell you what. Lots of people saying, "Can we actually uh, manage to coax you for a tune at the Broad Beard Championships?" That's them saying that, not me, Davy. I'm just passing yeah. on. Me. I'm just. Uh, just... Lindsay's boy. Lindsay Hussin's boy. He's he's a, he's a guy you went up on the stage. He's he's a budding young piper, so he is. All right. Well, Young Charlie, that. Charlie, and I gave him a wee shout out. Uh, Charlie's doing really well in piping, so he is. So. I'll, I'll bear that in mind. I'll bear that in mind. Right, yeah. uh, loads of people, uh, uh, a couple of other things to certainly talk about. In terms of using the products, uh, because a lot of people don't know that, certainly when they're growing beards in those early stages, you've got to start putting product into it. And like you say, you're at a championship, what is, I think 19 inches you said we're at just now in the beard. Have I just made that up? Is it 19 inches? No, no, it's not about 19. I, I need to go to the barbers again. I could do where we even up at the bottom. And uh, so I reckon I reckon after I'm evened up, I think I'll still be touching the 19 inch mark. So 
All right. So what, and, what's your uh, what's your go to regime then? What's your go to regime and and getting it looking nice? So on an average day, what are we doing to keep that? Does your beard have a name? Sounds like an odd question to ask, but everyone I seem to have spoken to so far has given their beard some type of name. Does your beard have a name, Davy? No, my my beard doesn't have a name, but um, Shug Shug in the Brotherhood, he he refers to me as Big Zeus, so that's a kind of nickname I've got. It's kind of that's stuck. I get a bit of ripping for it as well, but I, nah, I'll take it. I quite like Big Zeus, so I quite like that. So, so what's your what's your go to regime then for making this bad boy look good? What would you do? I mean, you're using broad beard, or what would you do to make this like, get this show ready? Let's say right. Right, so well, I had wash my beard first thing in the morning with, with broad beard wash, obviously. So Aye. then just gonna pat it dry with a towel. So then I never, I never ever put product in my beard when, when it's some people put product product in when the beard's still damp. But Aye. I wait till my beard's fully dry, and then I oil it. So this thing kind of drinks oil, so it does. So it's like, <laughs> um, so I usually give it a good oil. So I do, and then broad beard comb. Give it a good Aye. a good comb through, it, make sure there's no tangles in it, and then whatever butter is my choice for that day, and just get it. And then my my poor bristle brush, just give it a good brush through, Got a broad tash wax on it, kind of thing, you know. So I just, some days I go for the, the kind of curly tash, and then other days I kind of just have it more more natural sitting down. Aye. Sometimes I've sometimes go through days where I just use my beard butter all over and even on my tash, and it gives my tash just a nice a nice like kind of broom effect, just kind of like all hanging down, and then yeah. the other days when I want it, when I want it, kind of like it's kind of naturally curled now anyway over the years. So if I fancy a wee curl in it, I just get the uh, the tash wax in it. So I do so I so I've, I've got kind of I don't mean different looks, but a lot of, well majority of the time I've got a bobble in my beard because you kind of folk, I was out walking the dog earlier on, so I was and. You end up you're walking down the road, kind of with your head to the side, depending on where the wind's going, kind of thing, you know, because it's blowing about like a scarf, kind of. Right. So the majority of days, my beard is in a bobble anyway. So, and it work, it works. It's in a bobble and tucked away, or I've got a snood on. So, it's just, it's just, you kind of work, kind of do the, the type of work I'm doing with a beard glass. Right. It's just, it's not going to happen. So. What um. You know, uh... What's your sort of um? What's your favourite sort of product just now? Because uh, this is all filled with heather. This is all filled with heather for me just now. What's your What's your favourite sort of oil or or butter that you're using just now? They go oh, lovely. Um, the the oil of the oil, well, the oil I've got in today is the the uh, the, the champs oil for this year. So it is so right. I'd, prob- I'd probably say my my favourite oil, my favourite kind of go to. I don't. I always, I always keep going back to grafter. I like uh, grafter with, with chocolate orange butter. Yeah. Um, there's no there's no right combination or a wrong combination with, with the bro products and that's what I quite like about it. The it's the kind of the whole mix and match kind of aspect of it all. It's no it's not if you buy Arctic Explorer beard oil, you need to buy the like, thrill and vanilla butter kind of thing. You know, some people like Arctic and chocolate, some some people like Arctic and thriller kind of so Aye. so when you think about the, the actual amount of combinations, you know, in the broad beard vein, you know, there's quite a lot of combinations there and Maybe what works for one person doesn't work for another kind of thing, but it's Aye. just totally, totally. But I, I, every day when I go to put product on, kind of thing, you know, just, just kind of look at the oils that I've got sitting in front of me and decide, uh, what am I going to, what am I going to mix up the day, kind of thing, you know? And I've never had a bad result yet, so, and, so they and, all seem to work for each other anyway. And the cool thing is, obviously, with the whole look, I mean, you're obviously. People forget they see the pictures of you, but you're not just modeling just a product. Like, I hate using the phrase modeling, I'm, I've got to find a different name for that. I'm not, it is modeling, but um, when you're obviously doing the photo shoots, a lot of the uh, the clothes and stuff that are produced by Rob Beard, the, the caps I see you've got one on right there. Uh, yeah. the, the caps, the uh, um, the uh, what we call them, bubble hat, the, yeah. the, 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 the bubble hat, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I love the bubble hat and the long sleeve. Oh my god! I think the long sleeve is absolutely brilliant. Um, ah, the street so, is amazing. The street wear side of things is great. So it's I and that's and that's what I was talking about. You you'll see people that are very much a part of the community, but they might not necessarily be there with uh, the you know the long beards and what have you been a part of the contest. Yeah. But again, with the broad beard championships, I mean, we had one just there, of course, back in God. It seems like a lifetime ago, but it was only in February. 
Um, lucky um, went ahead. What's that? Lucky went ahead. If it was a few weeks later, it, it probably wouldn't have happened, you know, or about a month later, anyway, I should say. I give or take, give or take. And it was yeah. stormed this year, sold out again. Um, I thought it was one of the best ones yet. That was amazing. Every every year seems to seems to better the last year. And you, you don't think that that's actually possible, but just right. see, see the, the actual hype behind the competition as well. You know, like on the run up to it as well. I even even seen people like the last couple of days on social media. I think it was a couple of Americans saying, you know, that, that they'd love to come over to Scotland, you know, to bra, you know, to meet up with a lot of the people. So it just shows you the, the, the kind of reach it's got. Aye. And I, I've, I've been to another kind of, another few beard competitions, you know, out with Braun. Nothing's even a patch on the on the, the bra champs kind of thing. And I'm not I'm genuinely not just saying that because because I'm I'm an ambassador for the brand, but it's just everybody talks about the bra champs. It's just it's just like such a great night out kind of thing. And even this year we, we Riders Creed the band they, they were shit hot so they were, they were amazing. Know, they were really absolutely good. Amazing. And, and it was and it was such well. a great vibe. Such a great vibe, like all night. It was, it was really, really good fun. And I mean, and next year when you're going to be playing bagpipes on the main stage, I think <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be the best yet. It's going to be the best yet. Uh, right, uh, listen, David, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Um, um, again, we want to give our thanks to, you, and obviously we're happy that you're staying home, staying safe. Are you out working or are you staying home and staying safe just now? No, I'm, 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 I'm at home now, so I'm, I was going to say unfortunately, but it's, it's nice to get a bit of downtime and yeah. get stuff done about the house kind of thing, you know, so ah, it's, it is what it is kind of thing, you know, it's glad to be alive at the end of the day and that's what it's, it's all about, you know. It's, Definitely. I'll be taking a, 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 can we call Shen to giving us a couple of live videos from the, from the cave? I'll definitely see once once all this kind of shit storms over and I get the Wi-Fi sorted. Planning going live out there quite a lot, so I do kind of. Yes. And um, so it's actually I'm saying it's a workshop, but it's, I've got tools in there that that's, that's never even cut about a wood. I don't. I, I'm like some kind of like I was going to say like an OCD freak, but I don't know if it, I've got stuff in there like brand new brand new equipment that's never even cut about a wood because I use all my old. Mold faithful stuff. Right. It's my kind of go to happy place that I, I get into the shed and I, I kind of just look at everything that I've worked hard to get. Kind of, so it's, it's a workshop. There's not even about a dust on the floor kind of <laughs> thing, you know. So I kind of just go out there, sit and get get my. I've got my legs out there with a sound bar kind of thing. So just go out there and get the tunes on the shed door open, and my wife's usually shouting, "That's too loud," kind of thing. And you're just you're just in the zone kind of thing, you know. So I, so I definitely. I'm just a bit annoyed that I couldn't, I couldn't be in there the night kind of doing oh. it, you know, but just, it just wasn't happening. So we'll, we'll, we'll to, get it sorted anyway. We'll, we'll just have to do it again. We'll just have to do it again. Uh, listen, David, look after yourself. Uh, again, to everyone that's watching, thank you very much for watching. Make sure to share this video, let people know what's going on. And David, what is your Instagram where people can check out some of your pictures and what you're doing as an ambassador for the brand? So my Instagram is it's Davy Wallace, but it's Davy underscore Wallace underscore. So Davy, the small line underneath Wallace, the line underneath Davy Wallace. All right, we'll make, we'll make sure to get that in the, in the links here as well. So if you're looking to track yeah. down what Davy's doing. And yeah. don't forget to check out everything that's going on over at broadbeardoils.com. We'll try that again, broadbeardoils.com. Uh, you can get hats, T-shirts, bonnets, butters, combs, everything you need. And don't forget, it all comes back with a 30-day back before. guarantee. See before we go, Billy, can I, yes, can I flip the table a little bit here? So it's um, so what's your your direction with your moustache then? What's your plans for that? Oh mate, it is heartbreaking. <laughs> I I just want to I want to grow a big curly. So by the time I start gigging again, um with this, I want it big and I want it curly and I want it going round. But literally just today, somebody has emailed me about doing a web series thing. I did this web series like back last year, and they're like, we need more footage. And guess what? In that, I didn't have a fucking mustache. So I don't right. know is the short answer, but I would like to get it going. If I can work my I think I can talk my way out of having to shave it off. So I want it, I want it big and I want it, I just want it fucking uh, mental. I want uh, it mental. Uh, and yeah, that's, yeah. that, that's what I want. It's big and ridiculous because I am the only member of my family that has ever grown any facial hair or has tattoos. Or I pretty much am the milkman's son. There's no two ways about it. <laughs> 
There's no way to <laughs> about it. There's no way my dad's my dad. You know what I mean? My mum wanted a silver top one day and got her hole. Good on her. Good on her. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, oh, that, that, that's all I can assume, mate. I said, she was a shag girl. There's no two ways about it. But uh, <laughs> uh, So I might be sending you some messages to get some tips, mate. Uh, no just so I can keep this going. Oh, I've actually got one last uh, uh, question that's just come in here for you. Everyone was talking about the first championships that you went in. And he came second. Do you remember mm. who came first? Uh, I do. I, is it, I think is he watching the night? Is he? Ethan? I'm not. I'm not sure. Ah, that that explains exactly because it was Nathan that asked the question. Right. <laughs> 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 oh, awesome. All right, everyone. That's all from broadcast. We'll see you next Monday. Cheers. Thank